Today we're headed out for an early morning walk in the woods with no tripod and just see how much flexibility that can give you. So spring has sprung here in Ohio and I'm out this morning taking a walk in one of our local metro parks and I don't really have a set goal for a picture or an image or anything like that. So I thought I'd head out, no tripod, uh, just bring the Nikon Z6 II, uh, 24 to 200. Um, I got some other lenses with me, but I really suspect I'll just shoot off the 24 to 200 this morning. It's nice and flexible and perfect for these little walk arounds that you can do when you're just looking for some shots and want a lot of flexibility and variability. So just follow along. We'll see what I come up with. We'll stop, we'll get some compositions. Uh, this park does have several wild flowers this time of year yellow wildflowers would be pretty nice and some blue ones so hoping to get some interesting compositions got the morning light coming in over this way just enough clouds to pass through that should give me some interesting rays of light as we work our way through the trails and see what's out there so yeah just follow along and see why sometimes it can be useful to get out there and photograph with no tripod a little bit less gear and keep yourself nice flexible and just get out there to get some pictures so let's follow along <laughs> So I've stopped here. This is a little spot. There's a little drainage through here that runs through the woods. Not quite as many yellow flowers as I would like, but I've got this tree that has fallen across the trail and this drainage. Light keeps coming out and playing nicely. So we're just gonna work on a composition here, see what I can get. Probably zoom in a fair amount. I do still use the histogram, even without a tripod. It is still a guide and just sort of work through the compositions. There's several trees in line, so it's sort of like figuring out which ones should be in frame, which ones shouldn't. So I am shooting with the Nikon Z6 and the, the 24 to 200, which have some stabilization, which will let me get a little slower shutter speed than I might with a camera that doesn't have stabilization. Still, I don't want to get too carried away with that. So I am shooting at like F8. This particular composition, when I start bringing the sky out of it, gets me down around 1 25th of a second. And I'm probably out to about, oh, 75, 80 millimeters. So with the stabilization, there shouldn't be any real camera shake or anything like that. So still a doable shot. And this is a good time that things like this this is practice with your image stabilization and see just how far can you go. It will vary from people to people based on how steady you can hold it. There's still some subtle variations. So this is a good time to get out to see how far you can push it because you're out practicing, experimenting. And in that way, if you're ever out in a situation where you really want this shot, maybe a long exposure and you didn't have a tripod with you, you'll sort of know what camera settings you can get away with and come away successfully. Um, so it's always a good chance to practice and that's what days like this are good for. Okay, we've reached a part of the trail where it's got all these blue flowers lining it. A little bit of a curve in the trail. Um, there is a big dead tree stump right in the middle. Big dead tree stump right in the middle of the trail. So we're gonna put the bag down here. And this is where it's really nice not to have a tripod because I can just sort of wander through, not worry about, oh, I'm getting set up and locked into a composition. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here, seeing what I can work up with, come out with a composition, get some blue flowers, maybe some detail shots of those, see if I can work this stump into it. The woods, maybe if the light plays well over this way, we'll get that in there too. So, so yeah, so we're gonna play here for a little bit and see what we get. Okay, just to play a little bit here, I am gonna put a polarizer on. The polarizer can help cut some of the glare off the green. So we're gonna see what that does. Because I'm hand-holding, that could potentially put me into a zone where I would need a tripod, but we're just gonna play with it, see what I can get. That's what I'm out here to do is play and see what happens. So I did put a circular polarizer on and we'll play with that just to see if it gives me a little bit deeper, more saturation in the colors, especially some of these rays of light. So back to trying to find my composition. <laughs> So what I've got out here is I've got this field of blue flowers. I've got this sort of like dead tree side of a dead tree that's laying in the ground out here. And I'm just gonna try to work a composition, see what I can get. Now here with the polarizer and just sort of the, my depth of field concerns, I am kicking my ISO up a little higher, probably around 200, may even go a little higher because I wanna get my aperture up higher. I started with an F8. I wanna get up to around F11, maybe an F16, just for my depth of field. Cause I got a lot of flowers and I got a for strong foreground and background. And I just wanna make sure I have my, everything in focus that I want in focus. 
Okay, so I've been playing around with aperture and shutter speed. Um, you know, I shoot so much from a tripod, this really is a good experience to learn what the image stabilization can do and what it can't. So I'm sort of between two issues here on this particular scene with this log in front and the flowers in the back. I've got a depth of field where I want my aperture to be pretty high to get everything in focus. And then I've got just the camera shake because as I bring that aperture up, depending on my ISO, my shutter speed's getting longer. So I'm sort of settling in I think at ISO 400, aperture f16, which puts my shutter speed at one fifth. And so far, it actually seems like it's working better, that the image stabilization is keeping me safe. And some of the blur I seen earlier was more related to depth of field than it was shake. So we'll get a couple more shots here. Okay, so I moved over a little bit. Uh, same general area, and now I've got that tree right here. Before, it was sort of really backlit, so I've sort of moved so that the light's coming in this way. With that said, we're sort of between a gap in the clouds. As you can see, it's really bright on me, and so I'm getting some shadowing and shading on this tree. So we're gonna play around here just a little bit. I'm gonna sort of watch, because there are just enough clouds in the sky that if I get one that passes over, it'll diffuse that light. And I sort of like how the trail comes towards this tree, really just waiting for the light to play nicely. Um, right now it's a little harsh, may take it anyways. Sometimes these harsher light conditions, you know, in this particular instance can work good in the black and white. So I might get it, so I have it, and we'll play with it in black and white. If it makes the video, that's cool. If it doesn't, you know it was trash. So yeah, in the meantime, I sort of keep an eye on this for light. Several cool flowers around here things like that so I'm just going to sort of poke around in this general area and work through on some of that okay so I hung around here a little bit like I said we tried to get the, the stump here as you can see even from this the lights very harsh and contrasty I got a few shots the lights really not improving right here because the Sun's coming from like right up here shining straight down the trail to it so while I waited a little bit though I did find these fallen trees with these mushrooms and fungi on the side of it so i should have played a little bit with that i do think i got an interesting shot out of that so we played there and took one more look obviously at this tree and it's not really like i said the light's just not really cooperating right now with it so and that sometimes happens and that's fine i did get some we'll see if they look okay in black and white and go from there uh so yeah we're gonna load up move down the trail a little bit more just keep an eye on what we see as we go So when you're out here doing something like this, this is a good time to sort of walk slow. Keep an eye out on everything around you. You might find some surprising composition, things like that. Keep your head on a swivel, keep looking around, just looking for interesting compositions that'll work. The light's getting a little stronger. Some of the clouds have floated off, which I wasn't necessarily anticipating, but there's bound to still be something cool and interesting here. So just keep that in mind as you're out doing this. That's some of the flexibility of no tripod. You can just really look around and find some interesting stuff. Okay, so as I'm walking along, we just have these great fields of blue flowers through here. Um, I'm trying to look for a broader, wide composition with this. Not necessarily finding it, but I am going to pause here, get some pictures of the flowers and things like that. These only come around in the springtime year. They're full, so it's going to be worth a little bit of time just to get some closer up flower compositions and things like that. So I'm going to sort of work along the trail here and get some of those. Okay, we got some pictures of the flowers. Moving on, I am going to make my way a little bit deeper into the woods. Right now, I'm right along this river, which the sun is coming in through. So I wanna get back in just a little bit deeper, see what kind of compositions I can come up with there. And then we'll probably about wrap this up. Okay, I ended up stopping real quick for some coffee down here by the, the river as I headed on. And as I was down here, I noticed there's this tree over here with some super cool textures and stuff on it. And one of the things I like to do when I am out and about without a tripod is some of the texture, some of those more intimate compositions are what I'm sort of looking for because I, I feel like I have a better eye for them when I'm not thinking I have to set up a tripod and all that gear. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set up, get a few pictures of this, and we'll see how those turn out.
So I think that about wraps it up for today. Again, it was an early morning walk. Uh, just me, the Nikon Z6 II, the 24-200. I brought my other lens, but I never really swapped over to them. So it's pretty much the 24-200 through most of it. The big thing being no tripod. Um, I think it's good to get out there and do that sometimes. It's easy as a landscape photographer to fall in the trap of always using a tripod. And I think it can cause you to miss some shots and not think quite as creatively. Whereas if you're just out with your camera, no tripod to use, opens you up to try different compositions, try different things. It helps you learn your camera gear in case you are ever in a situation where you don't have a tripod, maybe it broke, maybe you lost it, and you won't ruin your trip because you'll sort of get an idea of what kind of stabilization your camera can do, what kind of settings you might need to have to still get the shots you want. Now, with that said, I was out here and this was Woodlands Photography, which I find challenging anyways. It's one of the things I want to improve this year is improve my Woodlands compositions and things like that. So this was all a part of doing that. This is me practicing. This is me getting out there and trying it. I find Woodlands difficult. So it was good to get out, get the tripod put down, and just wander around and see what we can get with. We'll see what kind of images we walk away with, but any day out in the woods is a great day, and it was a beautiful morning. Spring is here. So I challenge you to get out there sometime and go out there with just your camera, no tripod, and go explore. This is a perfect thing to do at your local metro park, something you can visit frequently. Travel light, get out there. The key thing to get out there more often than turning everything into a giant trip or planning adventure. Grabbing your camera and going is a great way to do it. Going with no tripod just helps support that. And if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me in the future, including little challenges like these, mini gear reviews, behind the scenes, things like that, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Yeah.